Here we have a 2004 Mercedes-Benz key fob that came in for repair. And this one is expedited. We got it yesterday and we're going to work on it today. Let's read what the customer wrote. My 2004 Mercedes key stopped working. It locks and unlocks the car but doesn't turn the ignition. I opened the key and noticed that one of the legs of the NEC chip got unsoldered. The NEC chip is what contains the programming for that vehicle. And every NEC chip is unique to the car that it belongs to. Wow, the pin is completely broken off. The pin goes inside the chip and it's completely broken off. And possibly the second pin also. No, the second pin looks good. And I see a missing component right over here also. Hmm. How are we going to fix this? Let me just go over rest of the fob quick. And it looks clean. It looks very clean except for this area here. A few people asked in previous videos, is it worth it to fix a Bansky fob? If you go to a dealership, you can expect to pay $500 to $1,200 for a key fob. So definitely it's worth it. But is it doable? That's the question. Right now what I'm thinking is we can grind the chip from here to expose the copper inside and maybe we can run the wire. We can solder a wire from whatever is left on the inside onto this pad here. And we can replace this component and hope for the best. I never had to grind an NEC chip before. I do not know what's going on inside the chip. Maybe we can practice on a donor NEC chip. This chip cannot be replaced. And I did try to see if we can read the programming of the NEC chip so we can make copies of fobs, but that was not possible. I do not know if there's a way to read the programming of that chip. I tried and I was not able to do it. Let's grind pin number one here and see what's inside. And I'm doing this as a practice before we attempt to work on the customer's fob. So what's inside? Yeah, I think it's doable. Look at this. I was able to see the rest of the pin inside by grinding that area of the chip. Awesome. So we can grind this area and then we can run the wire from here to here replace the component, the missing component, and we should be good. Okay, and the reason I'm using alcohol is because I do not want debris to fly around. It looks like the pin is broken all the way from the inside, but I do see a tiny trace. The pin is not broken from here, but it broke all the way from the inside. We need to grind some more. I do not want to grind too much. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. That grinding pen is one of the most used tools 
that I have in the shop here. I use it on almost every repair because a lot of the repairs that we do requires that we fix broken traces, broken pads. And if it wasn't for the grinding pen, how can you fix this? And we're going to use pad strips number two. and we should be all good. Yeah, that's perfect. We did an awesome job. And let's replace that missing component. We have a donor board here and it's capacitor. All right, and I'm out of flux. Let me grab a syringe of flux. Okay, right here. And for those of you who do not know, we are one of the major distributors of Amtec Flux. Inventec Amtec Flux, not Amtec Direct. Amtec Direct is not Amtec, it's fake Amtec. They used to be distributors, but they are no longer distributors of Amtec Flux. Right now, we are the biggest distributors of Inventec Amtec Flux, which is the original Amtec Flux. Okay, right here. And we're gonna grab that component from a donor board, just like that. And we're gonna place it right over here. Awesome. Okay. And look at that. Amazing. Now, one thing I wanna do is inspect the rest of the pins. Make sure they are solid. And like I said, this chip cannot be replaced. And I wish that we can read the programming of that chip so we can program another NEC chip. But I have not found a way yet. All we have to do is test. We wanna make sure that we are getting the proper frequency reading, which is about 314.9. And we wanna make sure infrared is working also. I have a FOP tester right here. And will it work? Right now it's reading zero. We want it to read about 314.9 or 315 <laughs> right there 314.9 and we want to test infrared if it's working and we should get IR like you see here IR and we do see the red blink right let's test button number two 314.9 and IR is working and if we test button number three 314.9 and is infrared working yes 
so the fob is fully functional. Usually when the NEC chip is bad, we automatically deem the fob a no fix because we cannot replace the NEC chip and we cannot read the programming of the NEC chip. But I'm glad that we were able to fix this fob for the customer. We grinded that area of the NEC chip, restored the missing pin, replaced the component, the missing component, and the fob is fully functional. For all new viewers on the channel, the grinding pen, flux, and rest of the tools can be purchased directly off our website. Just log into northwishfix.com, click on shop. And that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and we'll do something else in the next video.